I, I was not only a student here, I was once uh, uh, temporarily for a very short time uh, a lecturer also at uh, Edinburgh University and I found that universities stand for integrity and objectivity and impartiality and the search for truth and the pursuit of knowledge and these were all the qualities I had to leave behind when I went into politics. <laughs> This morning, uh, the theme is essentially about the interdependence of, of the nations of the United Kingdom, and we are really living in an interdependent world. Now, Sir Paul Nelson is with us this morning, and I am so pleased and privileged that he has come to join us today. Paul, thank you, thank you very much. A Nobel Prize winner who did his research at Edinburgh at University in the initial stages of his work, and then went to Rockefeller, and is now doing a big institute in London. Is far too modest a man to say that he is now heading the biggest research project in medicine in the United Kingdom, the Crick Institute. And that is a £650 million project, £100 million budget a year, with uh, several hundred, I think 1,400 researchers across the whole of the United Kingdom. And I think from his experience, we will be able to hear how it is the case that Scotland will benefit from the biomedical and cancer research that is being done across the whole of the United Kingdom. The UK provides a sort of critical mass of scientists. Um, it provides um, a mixture of different ways of approaching scientific problems. It provides a range of different ways of funding. All of this helps in having a high quality um, scientific research endeavour, um, not only in Scotland, but in fact throughout the UK. We all profit from what we have in place, which is actually the best scientific endeavour in the world, second only to the United States. For me, uh, it's a no-brainer. You know, British science, as we've heard, we, we only rank second to the US, but they spend vastly greater sums of money on scientific research than we do. We do, we deliver the best uh, rate of discovery, innovation in the world. When you think of it, the great advantages of pooling and sharing the available resources for research in every area from scientific to artistic, cultural, and medical research, which is one of the themes uh, today. Scotland is a huge beneficiary of this uh, system. With 8% of the population, we get 30% of the university research funding of the United Kingdom. With 8% of the population, we get about 30% also of the philanthropic and foundation and uh, charitable money that goes into research in the United Kingdom. Scientific research is crucially important for advanced knowledge-based countries such as ours. We cannot rely on cheap labour or massive natural resources. We have to rely on our brains. If Scotland goes independent and separates itself away from the rest of the UK, if it puts a border in place, that's going to reduce the opportunities for funding, and I think ultimately that will mean more money from the Scottish taxpayer, and more importantly, I think it will reduce permeability and fluidity of ideas and uh, researchers across that border, which in the, in the end will damage the research endeavour, which will damage the economy and damage the improvements in the quality of life and um, all the things that come and flow from science. I think it's a risky venture. I subscribe totally to the notion that Scotland is a real area of strength in medicine, medical research and life sciences research. And we have a very big engine and it, it, it's no accident this, this big medical life science research engine hasn't just appeared overnight. Well, I think it's really crucially important that, uh, that Scotland stays in the UK. I chaired an inquiry for the Secretary of uh, Scotland and my report went uh, to him and there was a debate in the House of Commons in Westminster. And it was not party political, everybody was agreed and because we as Scots have made these recommendations and persuaded the English and the Welsh and the Northern Irish to follow them. We have UK-wide improvements in food safety. You don't need me to tell you that Scotland has five universities and the top 200 in the world. I mean, we've bandied that statistic around. It, it would be really impressive, I think, if we had three or four universities in the top 20. But the fact we have five in the top 200 is worth something. When we wrote our open letter that was published uh, just over a month ago, uh, the 14 of us thought that it was going to be a very difficult undertaking. We thought it was inherently unlikely that an independent Scotland would be able to establish a common research area with the remaining United Kingdom. 
Adrian Burr, a co-signature to David Carter's letter and one of the finest research scientists actively working in Scotland today, is also a trustee of Cancer Research UK and an ex-trustee of the Wellcome Trust. He has pointed out that the Wellcome Trust said last December, and I quote, there is no guarantee that our funding, that is the Wellcome Trust funding, would be maintained at current levels. At present, the Wellcome Trust funds £46 million each year for biomedical research in Scotland, which as a consequence of independence could potentially be put at risk. Now these sources, these other sources of funding matter because the Scottish Funding Council only supplies 34% of research funding in Scotland. The United Kingdom has been a platform where the integration of our research work and research facilities, particularly the interaction of people, has been the basis of doing things best. If you look at the history of Scotland, then we are very proud of Scottish genius in research, particularly in medical research, but right across the board. And we have pointed to the huge and great examples across the centuries of Scots who have been the inventors of the steam engine, the telephone, the television, radar, right across to uh, the modern inventions, including dolly the sheep, including many of the things that Paul himself has been associated with in his, in his, his career. But when you look in depth at this, what steam engine was developed with Bolton in England. Alexander Fleming invented penicillin, but he did so as a stock in London, and it was commercialized by Florian Chain in Cambridge. If you look at uh, Alexander Logie Baird, his television, although he came from Helensburg, Scotland, was developed in Hastings in England. If you look at all the other great inventions of the time, which is usually a Scottish and English or English and Welsh and Irish connection where the UK is a platform. That is the way of the modern world, to recognise the integration that has happened, the connections that are important, the togetherness that makes us a community, and also the interdependence of the modern world. And I have no doubt, if we can put this argument in the next few weeks, and we will record what is, in my view, a patriotic vote, no, on behalf of the Scottish people. Thank you very much.